What's good, greatness gang? Welcome back to another reaction. And today I have a very special WWE reaction from arguably one of the greatest of all time and arguably the greatest of all time, Undertaker and Mick Foley. Video is titled, they're gonna be reliving their infamous Hell in a Cell match. WWE Untold. So, I'm pretty sure a lot of you are aware of that legendary Hell in a Cell match. Um, I was young when it occurred, so I was like, let me re-watch it as an adult. And also, I came across this, so Undertaker and Mick Foley going to be giving their perspective as well, so now that I'm older, I'm like, what the hell was these guys thinking doing a match like this? Especially the infamous fall that Mick Foley took. Not just career ending, but possibly life ending fall. Was it worth it? I guess so. Because we still here now, many years later, still talking about it. So let's check it out. I did not expect him to get up from that. He hit and finally he started moving around. And I was like, man, that's one tough son of a gun right there. Nineteen ninety-eight. I was seven years old. Well, my feud with The Undertaker had actually ended a while earlier. I thought we were entering a match cold. I thought my character had been through a lot and people had lost interest in it. After watching the first ever cell match between Shawn Michaels and The Undertaker, I realized I was in a terrible predicament to even try to approach the level that uh, they had reached was going to be very difficult. And I just didn't see how it would be possible without something special. I can guarantee that mankind will have a surprise for everyone that you will not soon forget. If we can do something special, if we can start a match in a way that no one ever has, maybe we can fool people into thinking we're having a great match, even if we're not. Hmm. I'm not sure exactly what had happened, but I broke his foot. And we weren't sure, you know, how you know, that was going to play out. Yeah, I did happen to have a, you know, a fractured in my ankle. It was such an important time in the business. You knew you had to do it. So, I mean, you just grit your teeth and go in there and, and do what you do. That compounded the troubles that we were, uh, <laughs> we were facing. Yeah, The Undertaker and I reminisced about that a couple of years ago. Like, what were we even doing in that situation? Like, and yet he willingly entered it with a broken foot, which speaks volumes as to what type See, of... See, I did not know his foot was broken. Uh, he is. Oh, my, oh my. Look out! The Undertaker is here, and he's walking with purpose! Oh, this is gonna be bad! I don't remember... He's walking with a broken foot. ...to that day, other than being approached by Mr. McMahon and him asking me if I had been up on top of that structure earlier in the afternoon. And I assured him I had, which was the biggest lie I'd told up to that point in my life. And then he asked me if I was comfortable up there, and I assured him I was, which became the newest biggest lie I'd ever told in my life. Because if I had ever gone up on top of that structure in the afternoon, I wouldn't have been scaling it that evening because it was terrifying. What if he got up there and backed out and we never had this legendary WWE moment, one of the biggest moments in their company's history? I wonder what, like, where have their company been right now? Because this is one of the moments that made both of their careers. 
absolutely terrifying. I know there are people in the uh, W. They made the Hell in, Hell in a Cell match popular in general. The reaction, even with a normally hot crowd, was a little bit lukewarm until we got up on top of the cell. What's he doing? Well, he's trying to get up to the top of the cage. Well, I'd see that, but for what? I, oh, he's not very logical. I mean, I, he needs therapy. What if Soon's Mick got up on top of the cage, he fell right through immediately? That would have been hilarious. To be completely honest. Yeah, he kind of walking like his foot is messed up. Am I going to be able to get up there? Right. How, how could you climb with that foot? Yes, because I don't know how. I mean, I would have got up there. I don't care how, but I would have got up there. It was definitely an, <laughs> an exciting uh, exciting way to, to, to start off a Hell in a Cell match, to start out on top. There are moments when our feet are actually sinking into the mesh. It's like we're tearing holes in the mesh as we They walk. definitely looked way too heavy for that. Should have been a harbinger for even worse things to come. They're destroying the, the hell in the cell. And my God, don't get them over here where we are. I still remember clearly. And even, even that move right there, the fake suplex. And my God, don't get them. What if somebody just accidentally leaned back? That could have went so wrong. Come over here where we are. I still remember clearly the, the, the distinct sound of the wire coming unwound or breaking from the pressure of our weight. Well, funny enough, I felt safer on the edge or the pulling of the of the cage. And I just remember uh, getting a couple of really quality chair shots to the back. I think uh, Jerry Lawler said, Puts goosebumps on my back there. It makes the hair on my neck stand up. I like it. No! Even with the chair shots, you got to be careful. And, uh, the next thing I know, keep I your balance. Jesus Christ. Oh my God. That's God is with us. He is what if his feet got caught on the edge of the cage and he didn't fall properly? So that call has a, has a pulse. I cannot believe. I, that, that, it's over. That cage is 16 feet high. And you see the look on Taker's face? It's like he's trying to stay in character. But you can tell deep down he's really concerned. Like, oh shit, is he okay? Cage is 16 feet high. When I tossed him off of there, and you know, as I was watching him fall, and it it seemed hmm. like it took forever for him to hit the table. It was like a only thing I could liken it to is whatever an outer body experience. It was very, it was so crazy. And it was so loud in there with the people. At that point, nothing like that had ever been done. Believe me, I was almost having a heart attack to watch what was going on. And I got to Mick. I'm asking him, are you okay? Are you okay? And he gave me the, the sign there that, yeah, I, I can continue, which flabbergasted Mick. That is crazy. Uh, Mick is probably the toughest quietly, WWE legend of all time. My shoulder, my shoulder. Him and Spike Dudley. And in order for the stretch to get there, we had to lift the, the uh, Hell in the Cell up. So with the Undertaker still on the top of the, the Hell in the Cell, hmm. it started moving upward. It's dangerous too. Cage raging. Do they realize the Undertaker is still on top of the cage? They're raising the cage with the Undertaker still on top. What? Obviously, I know they raised the cage. But I was, I was kind of oblivious to it, really. Because what if he falls through the cage? Now he got a deeper fall to the ring. It's just so much that could go wrong. I was so zoned in in what we were doing at that point. 
you know, I'm kind of up there without any kind of communication with anything or anybody. I was just like, well, I guess I'm not going anywhere till they, you know, till they, till they bring me down. We got Nick about halfway back. He started uh, saying, no, I want to go back. I want to go back. I said, no, you're not, you're not going anywhere. You're going back. You know, you're going to hospital. And the next thing I know, Nick jumps up. He started climbing up to hell and cell again. Uh, and he started going up to the top. You're kidding me. How in the hell is he standing? Look at a sick smile. He's got a smile on his face, for God's sakes. Are you kidding me? He wants to go back up. Those slippery boots. And that's a good job of Taker like getting back into it really quickly and playing along with Mick going at his pace. I didn't know for sure if I could. But like, oh shit, we back into it. Let's try. But by the time I got to the top of the cell, I was just about out of energy. So I looked back and I, uh, I wish that I'd had the strength and the energy to exchange with The Undertaker. But I'm thankful that I didn't in retrospect, because if I'd had the strength to exchange, I also would have had the strength to get off the cell for the choke slam. Good God. That might have been worse than going through the table. That's a crazy photo. Knowing what we know and knowing that that structure gave way, I believe that if I'd gone up in a way that I usually did for choke slams, that would afford me the safest landing on a mat inside a ring, that I would have uh, over rotated and landed high on my shoulders and likely never wrestled again. Hmm. I totally agree with that. I'm, I, I'm, we're talking a matter of a couple of inches, even the way he landed. I mean, that could have been hmm. catastrophic. I mean, it really could have. But it's crazy I, seeing it from the bottom angle. To the support bars. If I hadn't have done that, we'd have both gone through that together. So if you could right. imagine if I had stayed on that panel, my weight would have probably been on him too. And then what happens? The scary thought. It just was an incredible uh, thud, and it just made made you sick to see it and we could see something you know in his nose i remember punching him trying to talk some sense into him but also being just distracted by this huge what i thought was a <laughs> what i thought was a booger in his nose come to find out that it was one of his incisors that it went through his lip and ended up in his nose and I had the presence of mind to think that if I could just find a way to mm. stick my tongue through that massive wound and wriggle it, that it would create a compelling image. I knew I was going to be okay. Oh my. Oh. And he's smiling. Uh -oh. He is smiling. Mick had basically just had two really bad car accidents and still had the fortitude to get back to his feet and say, we're going to finish this. I mean, Mick is a genius. Human being right there. You know what? I'm panicking. I really am. Uh, I don't know if I should just say the match is over and then oh, he, he grabs me. Sick genius, but he's a genius. Oh, God. What is that? Treating this like a horror film. My God. You know, just the glittery, you know, the shininess. It's like the, the final scene of a horror film when the lead character is finally able to fight back and get the villain. That's what this is. Of the tax. And I guess and it's like, oh, we not finished. We got tax. Something like that and seemed like a suitable way to end that match. No! 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 Then he rode at it. 
The attacks were probably the easiest part of the night. It was definitely icing on the cake for him, you know, for him. Uh, he ended He's up in on a the boot. So it was a rough night for Mick Foley. <laughs> and even as I was, as Timmy White was counting three, you know, that I believe the right foot was just kicking ever so gently to show like, I'm not completely out of this ball game yet. The attacks get in his head. Who was not the referee of record, but he came out and uh, told me they were bringing a stretcher out for me. And he said, and I can see, you can see, look on the video and you can see I lift my arm. And the reason I lift my arm is I didn't want anyone in Pittsburgh to see me talking. And what I said to him was, have I already been on a stretcher tonight? And when he informed me that I had, that right arm went up about three seconds after that for a second time. And I said, I can't be on two stretchers in one night. And I hobbled my way to Mr. McMahon's uh, room. We took him back and uh, put him on a table. He went to let me know that his, his uh, shoulder was hurt. But he smiled at me and I could see, you know, that he had uh, a gash under his lip. They started stitching him up right there. Just an incredible uh, uh, sight to see. Mr. McMahon sat me down. And uh, I remember those words. Look at the, see the concern on Vince's face. You have no idea how much I appreciate what you've done for this company, but I never want to see anything like that again. Wow. It's everlasting. It's in our minds forever. And it's not any other great event in wrestling or mainstream sports. It's that play that defined the game. I couldn't ask for a better human being um, to do that with than, than Mick. These are things that, like I said, that I haven't really talked about. There's probably only a, fa a handful of, of people that I would, uh, you know, open myself up like that to, uh, he being one of them. Mouth full of blood. It's special to be still be considered such an iconic match and, and, and one that people really, you know, have all these, these really fond memories of. That just lets us know we, we, we did something right. It was the reactions to the unexpected. Mm. And I think that element Those of Those tacks had to get in his head. Embeds it in people's minds so that anyone who was there uh, in the venue or watching live when it happened will never forget that moment. This moment or series of moments has left this indelible imprint on people's memories. We're somehow able to create an image in people's minds that lives on and will outlive me and The Undertaker both. That's probably easily Taker and Mick's most memorable moment when you just mention their name. Pretty sure that's probably in at least people's top three moments from their careers. Uh, yeah, that was pretty stupid of them to do that, but entertaining on our part. So, hey, we still talking about it till this day. So, yeah, thank you for checking out this reaction. Let me know what other wrestling reactions to get to next. Subscribe to the channel, like the video. Love you guys.